Bracewell took the last wicket in that match, so there was an enforced wait of 11 weeks to join the 300 club. The Australians were again on the receiving end. The first test match was in Wellington. Bill again for LBW. There it is. 300 test wickets for Richard Hadley. Now you're the sixth member of the Select 300 Club in only your 61st test match. And astonishingly, the last 100 have come in just 17 tests. And this 300th victim appropriately was witnessed by your fellow Kiwis. After two draws, New Zealand won by eight wickets in Auckland to take the series one to nil. Then across to England, the first test match was at Lord's. Oh, that's out. Gooch is gone, and Hadley gets his reward. Oh, and beautifully bowled. What a ball to get. First ball after lunch from Hadley. Magnificent piece of bowling. Jeff Crow, the catcher. out this time the only thing umpire Whitehead would have had to decide there would be if the ball was low enough to hit the bales a beautiful ball by Richard Hadley no doubt about that for to Hadley the bale has gone way 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 down the field the England captain goes back One gone. Five wickets for Hadley once again. 26 times. That's it. Graham Dilly's out and the bales are off. Umpire Whitehead takes off the bales. It's a sixth wicket to Richard Hadley. Well caught by Ian Smith. That's a tremendous effort by Richard Hadley. And then in the second test match, six for 80, four for 60, 68, man of the match, and another New Zealand win. Yes, we drew the first test match at Lords, then went to Trent Bridge, which had uh, significant importance for me because I was reappearing at my home ground, of course, having played a, a number of years at, uh, at Trent Bridge for Nottingham. And uh, yes, we won that particular match, which was a great win for New Zealand cricket. Again, another almost complete performance by the New Zealand side. And then we drew the last test uh, at the Oval there to, uh, to win the series. And uh, that was our first ever series win against England in, uh, on English soil. And that's got to be out. The goose didn't even turn. Beautifully bowled by Hadley. Beautifully bold. Oops, he's bowled him. And that got through. It's very well up to Mike Gadding. And that wicket, the third wicket for Richard Hadley, brings him now level with Bob Willis in the test aggregate. 325 wickets, and it's a... Uh, Highly prized victim. Mike Gatting, the England captain, bowled by Hadley for 17. Oh, well bowled. Beautifully bowled. And Richard Hadley goes ahead of Bob Willis now. Oh, well bowled again. Two and three balls. The softener. And then the beautiful away swinger. What a very fine bowler. Very comprehensive indeed, but young Thomas played extremely well. How did you motivate yourself for that match? Back at Trent Bridge, wanting to beat England, how did you do it? Well, the thing is that uh, they were, in fact, my home crowd. 
and I think deep down they wanted me to personally do well, but of course English cricket to do well. And uh, there are a lot of good friends and great memories there at Trent Bridge, and as you walk into the ground, people say, all the best, good luck sort of thing. And that's a bit of a stimulus, because you know you've got the people supporting you in general. And uh, you know, I bowled, I think, consistently well in that match and, and got some runs, and it was a good fighting effort by the lads in general. And uh, I, f I just felt comfortable in that environment because it, was, it, it didn't feel strange to me. It was just like playing at Lancaster Park at home in Christchurch. And it was important and significant to do well in front of uh, those people that had been with you uh, uh, for such a long time. That's a classical four. And the 150 comes up. Favourite oh. strokes, a square cut, forcing stroke off the back foot, and the straight drive of the quick bowlers, and Greg Thomas is coming back. Can't stop that one. Don't give Hadley any room outside that off stump. And this time it's evaded Athy. There's no one covering. Full toss. Well, what else does this man have to do in one match? Richard Hadley reaches his half century. Innings without chance, but it's been a responsible innings because his side were faltering. He came in to score 144 for five, and now it's 207 for five. Four. Only just out of Bruce French's reach, but far enough. has come out of the slips. He has uh, a very square gully. Two men on the offside saving the single or the four. And there it is. Providing your straight enough. A lovely shot. Beautifully timed and placed. That's it, and Greg Thomas gets Richard Hadley. It's Graham Gooch, the man who dropped the catch earlier on, who this time safely pouches it. And so this fine innings has come to an end. Richard Hadley caught Gooch, bowled Thomas. 68, it's 2.39 to 6. And you're really into, or the spectators and cricket followers are really into, the battle between the all-rounders now, because everyone... I won't say everyone was at their peak, but everyone was playing pretty well out of that uh, little quartet. There was a lot of competition, and uh, as I say right at the start, I mean, the adrenaline flows a little bit more when you pit your skill against uh, another all-rounder. In fact, I've always said to the lads, particularly uh, in the 80s, that one way to motivate yourself is to pick an opponent in the opposition. Now, it might be John Wright picking Graham Gooch as his partner, and you've got to outdo them, you've got to beat them. Uh, the wicketkeeper against wicketkeeper, fast bowler against fast bowler, spinner against spinner, all-rounder against all-rounder. And if you actually beat them uh, in that particular match as far as runs or wickets or catches taken, or do the same in the series, and you've got six or seven of your blokes doing that, uh, you're going to win. And uh, so we have those little uh, private duels or contests going as I would have a go against the all-rounder. The others had to take on their man as well. 
and uh, I found that that was a very uh, significant uh, change in our, in our attitude. And the little contests that were going on between batsman and bowler, bat and ball, the inner games as such, outside the general concept, uh, were very, very important as a motivating factor. New Zealand made 413 and there was early success for Hadley. He dismissed Moxon, caught behind by Ian Smith the 23. And here he is now, coming into bowl to night watchman Philippe Edmonds. And LBW Edmonds going right across to Richard Hadley. Caught it. New ball goes through for New Zealand. Hadley breaks through again. Nine wickets in the match. And a very, very brave innings by John Embury comes to an end. Then Richard Hadley has something to bowl for here. He's never taken ten wickets against England. Oh, that looks out. It came back like a rocket from outside off stump. And Gladstone Small was trapped there, right in front of his wickets. Superb bowling, so Richard Hadley takes his ten wickets for the first time against England. That type of motivational work is very important uh, against all countries, but uh, particularly against the West Indies, I would think, who are very much on top. And they did very well against you in the first test of your next series, but then you came...